Hi there, AP Calc. I am so sorry I couldn't be with you today. I had an unexpected emergency, but hopefully this video will walk you through what you need to do for today. First of all, if you weren't here yesterday, there should be some extra handouts on the binder in the front of the room. If you are in somebody else's room, please ask for permission to go get the notes from yesterday. You will need these in order to continue today's work. Um, you will also need to ask somebody for help on what we learned yesterday before you start this video lesson. So first, get out your handout from yesterday. We will finish that, and then um, you will work on the handout that you received today from the sub. We left off yesterday after having learned about indefinite integrals, integrals that do not have numbers on them. Now, when integrals have numbers on them, like they did in unit three, these are called definite integrals because you can definitely tell what the answer is as a number. And the numbers on the integral, in this case, pi over two and pi, are called the limits of integration. And they're kind of related to limits from unit one, but we're not really gonna talk about that. That's more uh, BC calc. So for now, just know these numbers are called the limits of integration and we are going to do something with them after we integrate like we learned how to do yesterday. So the first thing when you do u substitution with exponentials is to identify the u. In example three, as we know from yesterday, the u is the exponent for the e. So in this problem, the u is cosine three x. The du, the derivative of cosine three x is going to be negative 3 sine 3x. Three we already have a sine 3x in the problem, but we do not have a negative 3. So what we need to do is put in a negative 3 and on the outside put in a negative 1 third in order to cancel out the effects of the negative 3 we put on the inside. We basically now have e to the u du. And we know the integral of e to the u du is e to the u. So our final answer is negative one third e to the cosine three x, basically e to the u. Okay, now we don't really need to worry about the plus c if we're doing definite integrals. You can put it in for now just to see what happens, but you actually don't need it, and you'll see why in a moment. Now, the, no the correct notation for this is that at the end, we put a straight line like this, and then we put the limits of integration on the top and the bottom of the line. And this basically means plug in pi, plug in pi over 2, and then subtract the answers. So what you're going to do is you are going to take this pi, and plug it in. So negative one third e to the cosine three pi. And then you're going to put a minus, so it's always a minus. And you are going to plug in the bottom number. So minus negative one third e to the cosine three pi over two. Next, we simply need to evaluate what the cosine of 3 pi and cosine of 3 pi over 2 are. So let's go back to our unit circle. Okay, I'm going to put it over here. So 3 pi, first of all, this is 0, this is pi, this is 2 pi, and this is 3 pi. So 3 pi is over here. And the coordinates for that point are negative 1, 0, and the cosine is the first one. So Cosine of 3 pi is negative 1. Therefore, our answer is negative 1 third e to the negative 1. Now, this double negative minus a negative 1 third, that becomes a positive. So positive 1 third. Now, what's 3 pi over 2? Well, pi over 2 is 90, and 90 times 3 is 270. 270 is basically down here. And the coordinates for that are 0 and negative 1. So the cosine is the 0. So cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. 
So the second part is e to the 0. Now, to simplify this a little bit, e to the negative 1 just means there's an e on the denominator. So this is basically negative 1 over 3e. And then e to the 0 is 1, so this just becomes 1 third. And we're done. I would like you to try problem 13 on your own and then pause the video for that duration. Afterwards, go ahead and restart this video to go over how to do it. Okay, I hope you pause the video. So first we start out by identifying the u. u is x squared plus 1. The du is 2x. We have the x, but we don't have a 2. So we need to put in a 2 and a 1 half on the outside to cancel out the effects. Which means our final answer is 1 half e to the u, because the integral of e to the u du is e to the u. So 1 half e to the u, and the u is x squared plus 1. We then put the line with the limits of integration on it like this, and then we plug in the top number, we plug in the bottom number, and we subtract. So we plug in the top number, into this equation. We get 1 half e 1 squared plus 1, which is 2, minus, now we plug in the bottom number, 0, 1 half e to the 0 squared plus 1, which is just e to the 1. We can't really simplify this, so that's pretty much it. That's our answer. Please pause the video and try this number 14. After you've tried number 14, please come back and restart the video so you can check your answer. All right, I hope you pause the video. The u in this problem is negative 4x. The du is negative 4. And we actually don't have a negative 4, so we're going to need to put it in. Now, I don't know if I can squish it in here, but anyway, that's a negative 4 on the inside. That means a negative 1 fourth on the outside. So our answer will be negative one-fourth e to the u. Negative one-fourth e to the u, which is e to the negative 4x. We then put the line with the numbers 0 and 1 on it, and then we plug in the numbers and do top number minus bottom number. So plug in the 1 first, negative one-fourth e to the negative 4 times 1, which is negative 4, minus negative one-fourth e, negative four times zero is zero. So that looks like that. And this is gonna be pretty much negative one over four e to the negative four, or negative e to the negative four, or you could put the e on the bottom. Basically, you have to find the answer choice that really matches your answer. In this case, all the e to the negative fours are on the numerators, so we can keep it on the numerator. So negative e to the negative four over four, the double negative here becomes a positive, and you have 1 over 4, and then e to the 0 is 1, so you just put 1 over 4. And we can see that basically that answer choice is D. Go ahead and finish this handout by doing try this number 15 and try this number 16 on your own. The answers you should get are 15D and 16B. For number 15, make sure you don't forget the du, which is actually not just 1, it's a negative 1. So if you put a negative 1 on the inside, you have to put a negative 1 on the outside. Go ahead and move on to the extension subwork that you received today for 4.1. On the front page, you will see a problem from the test. This is the second problem from the test. We'll go over the third problem from the test tomorrow, and you will receive back your test as well. So. Like we discussed yesterday, you have 15 minutes per FRQ question. You want to take two minutes to read the problem, annotate, create your FTC chart, anything else you need to do, and then take five minutes to read, read parts A through D and set up every problem. Finally, you will take eight minutes to solve what you can. So first, we have um, the H of T, which is basically an amount in this problem. So we know that if we do create our FTC chart, which I'm going to do really quick up here. The H of T is a temperature and H prime would be a rate 
and h double prime would be a rate of the rate. Uh, it's not really a rate in or a rate out, it's just the temperature. So there's only one, there's only one function, not two. Okay, let's take two minutes, or we took two minutes to read the problem. Let's take five minutes to set up every single part. So part A, use the data in the table to approximate the rate. So we want to approximate the rate, so meaning this H prime, at which the temperature of the air of the T is changing. So basically what you need to do is the slope formula and you're doing it at 3.5, meaning you're using these two points. So what you're gonna do now is do H of five minus H of two over five minus two. Yikes, I don't have enough room. Okay, we can come back and finish the actual calculations later. Part B, using correct units, explain the meaning of this equation in the context of the problem and use a trapezoidal sum to estimate it. So basically this is an average formula and it gives you the average of whatever you plug in. So in this case, it gives you the average temperature over the time period zero to 10. So that's the first thing that you want to say because the explanation is always worth one point. So say something about the average temperature over time period. My apologies, this really does not write well here. Over time period zero to 10. Okay, you get the idea, zero to 10. Okay, next you want to basically start doing the Riemann sum. So you do one over 10 integral zero to 10 h of t dt and write out the calculations for the trapezoid. So remember, it would be, I will do the first one with you. It's one half times two and you do wanna show like all the calculations so that you can get points if you get the final number wrong. So 1 half times 2, and then 66 plus 60. Plus, and you have two more, or actually three more trapezoids, one from 2 to 5, one from 5 to 9, and one from 9 to 10. So go ahead and take a moment and do that right now. I don't have room here, so I'm just going to allow you to do it on your own and stop talking for a moment. Okay, next, is there a time t such that h prime equals negative 2.3? This is clearly a mean value theorem problem. So what you need to do, first of all, is show the average h over that time period, or the average h prime over that time period. So what you're going to do is do h of 10 minus h of 0 over 10 minus 0, and you should get negative 2.3. And then you're going to write an explanation, but for now, let's just write the words mean value theorem. And then during the last eight minutes, you come back and you actually write the full explanation. Because h of t is differentiable, or because it's h of t is continuous and differentiable, and then copy the conclusion because of the mean value theorem. Okay, now they're bringing in some biscuits. The biscuits have a temperature of 100 degrees and they are cooling. And we know that the rate of their cooling is this B prime. So basically we now wanna know how much cooler are the biscuits than the T. We already know the T is 43 degrees. So the T is 43 degrees. We just need to figure out how hot are the biscuits and compare the two values. So how hot are the biscuits? Basically you need to integrate the rate and just add the initial condition. So basically, the B of 10, the temperature of the biscuits at 10, will be 100 plus the integral of B prime from 0 to 10. And it's plus because the cooling aspect is already taken into account by this negative sign here. So basically, this is the temperature of B. Um, this is the temperature of the biscuits at time 10. Next, please pause the video and take eight minutes to solve what you can of the rest of it. So for part A, you're gonna plug in the numbers. For part B, actually calculate that Riemann sum you set up. For part C, write the full out conclusion. And then for part D, 
go ahead and actually find what b of 10 is and then subtract it from the h of 10, which is up here, and basically write a conclusion about which one is hotter and by how much. So pause the video and do that now before you move on. Next, you're going to complete the back of the 4.1 extension sub handout using your 4.1 notes. By now, this shouldn't be too bad. I don't have an answer key right now on these on this video, but we will check it tomorrow in class, so make sure you have it ready by then. By now, you should be able to finish your homework because you know how to do definite and indefinite integrals. Please complete both the front and the back for the, of the homework for tomorrow, for Friday, when I will return and collect it. All right, everybody, see you tomorrow.